this is in Seattle, but there's hackathons all over the place. I started to kind of search those out mm -hmm. and there's so many tech and now I've got time schools almost out and I've got a better job and yeah. Yeah. I'm able to, right. um, we are, we're interested in presenting like that, right? We are, uh, anyone who wants to develop OSC stuff is open game as long as they're open source. Yeah. So awesome. That's definitely game. So, I want to just update on uh, my side, the London International Academy, so OSC Workshop's Facebook page, um, just some notes there, so OSC Club in Ontario that's starting to brew up, uh, if you take a, I'm going to paste the link to this thing here, it's a little slow. We got snowed in here quite a bit. It's a <clears throat> kind of a nice winter storm. Uh, we're glad to make it back yesterday because Kansas City International was a little bit <clears throat> congested Um, let's see, did, it, did this freeze up or am I still... It did, but it you did, seem to go from now. Okay, it did freeze up. I'm going to my Facebook page. I'm going to paste that. Paste that in the next slide. Click on that, so at page number two, click on that to see some of the updates on a build. So, good news from the weekend trip. So on, on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we held the first ever immersion training, that a three-day program where we took, the, that's in the pictures here in the bottom right, uh, you see that's, that's William. Uh, the guy in the blue shirt is is Charlie. Another person is Pascal. But William and Charlie are from London, Ontario, and we trained them to uh, and went over the startup of an OSC club. So the first day was a 3D printer build. Second day we went over some FreeCAD practices. So we we kind of went through the basic workflow of FreeCAD. So they learned that. And on the third day we talked about the collaboration aspects of how we work together, including OSC spec and the process for. Uh, for working together with development templates, Google Docs online, uh, as well as FreeCAD that's shared on a wiki with work logs and everything else. So it was a very productive time and uh, these guys are actually very excited um, regarding uh, the work of OSC. So so Will, William, he has built the brick press. That's William who built the brick press in China a long time ago. And look in the back, uh, see that poster in the back there? Uh, that's actually an OSC poster. It's like look at the Global Village construction set as the ultimate STEM project. 
Uh, so William has been promoting the work of OSE and in fact each and every one of his classes for STEM he starts with a TED talk to connect STEM to the, the bigger picture uh, basically engineering or science education with meaning STEM with meaning and so right now uh, it was quite quite interesting to see the activity going on in London Ontario and so we're, we're actually looking at pretty ambitious plans there so it's it's looking really good because because they're actually considering opening up an OSC labs storefront where you present stem education you have workshops a place to meet a hacker space and everything else we're looking at at OSC labs as the as the name for that but definite major major activity sprouting up in London Ontario uh, not only the OSC club where we're gonna work on a cordless drill part but also a physical facility for carrying on OSC work but focusing on younger people so younger people as in getting a culture out to the younger generation who are then ready more amenable to open source and open source ecology type of work so yeah extremely excited about that and we're pursuing that relationship uh, major, major development point here so so really glad how the trip turned out um, so you can take some of the look at some of the pictures there but yeah just an amazing time out there in Canada uh, flight to flying into Detroit and then driving out to London Ontario um, very nice so that's my report uh, as far as pursuing uh, things from here it's continuing on all the 3d printer work getting um, business as usual to the 3d printing infrastructure for larger and smaller 3d printers the 12 inch version of the 3d printer plus the filament making aspects that's same old same old on the on a critical path so yeah yeah really good stuff um any questions or comments about that uh, the the grand london ontario adventure Not really, Not but really, it's but exciting, exciting that the critical, the critical mass, mass is building. building. Yeah, yeah, it's this could be it. So I'm definitely looking forward to more clubs in different locations where you can really leverage um, a crowd develop development effort. And um, if this works out, I mean, that could be a major, major step up. Uh, if there's a physical location that OSC is involved in, that's really good. Um, so let's continue. Uh, so maybe, Abe, do you have any updates on the D3D Mini aspect. Yeah, yeah I've been working, working on the uh, climb design a little bit, actually. I, I didn't get much done over the holiday, but the, uh, I, I was thinking I was about the thinking clamp, clamp again, again, and, and I, wanted I wanted to kind of kind move, move on to the, the frame sizing and, and all that, but the, the, the color the clamp color looked interesting, so I thought I'd try to dress up on that, and that. The only issue with about any clamp system I didn't really, I didn't really look, look too, close too close before, before about the snack, snack clamp, clamp on the distance. The distance. At the bottom, the bottom of the Z axis, the issue, the issue with any with large, large clamp, clamp like a bolt like going under there, is going to be uh, that, it's that it's thicker than thicker the PVC, PVC corner, corner parts. parts. So, so it will, it will prop, prop up the frame, up the frame at, that at that point, and then the, the frame the won't frame be won't sitting on a surface solid. So I'm thinking it's almost like they have to make feet parts because. Just about anything uh -huh. we put over the pipe at the bottom is, is potentially going to cause uh, that issue. I don't know about the, the thinner clamp without a bolt around it like the other style, but uh, it, it seems like it's easier other than that we end up with a bunch of extra parts to come up with some kind of feet that prop the frame up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. Yeah. But it, it's, it's, I mean, technically, I mean, technically you could, you could uh, redesign, redesign 3D printable, 3D printable corner, corner pieces, pieces other than, other than the, um, for, for printable, printable ones. ones. I don't know I don't that, know that, I don't know how well you, you can glue, glue the PLA, PLA and and if you're using PVC, PVC pipe, pipe or, of course, or, if you're 3D, 3D, 3D printing print print the whole thing out of PLA, then I assume you do that pretty well. I don't know how PLA and PVC well to glue or whatever, but obviously for somebody wants to use store by PVC corners off the shelf, then then you've got to figure out some additional feet. And 
The only way to do that looks like you have to screw something on there. Otherwise, it's going to be another like clamp. You know. So I I could see just printing a bunch of blocky clamps that go on around the pipe that that requires let's see, you know, several parts or more to fit around the. Maybe near, near the corners, corners or something, because it's, kind of it's kind of hard to attach, attach anything, anything to those those, uh, those corner, corner pieces. pieces. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So, uh, I just downloaded your recent clamp, so you've got a two two piece section at this point. Uh, yeah, yeah. So that uh, collar yeah. clamp style. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. That was yeah. the only way I figured to do it. I kind of simplified that. I didn't. I just did bolt holes because I was thinking that um, that would print faster. I, it looks like, you know, there's a lot of other on the clamshell parts for the axes and so on. I see that there's there's gaps that it manages to bridge over with holes, you know, underneath the, the clamshell parts that way. So it can, it can bridge certain narrow areas, I guess, printing. But I assume that that kind of slows down the printing. So I was trying to make the holes through there. It's two pieces, obviously. Uh, uh, such that it would print, print hopefully on on the, on the uh, uh, as, as it's symmetrical, so, so it's the same, yeah. it's just one part. one part. So, so you just need two of them. Um, um, the, the holes, holes I, I, I didn't add any like, like recesses, recesses for the hexes. For the hexes. Uh, first, I was trying to do that, and then I changed my mind because I don't know that it's necessary on that on that clamp. But to look at that. Plus, are both? Let me ask you this: Are both bolts for? For attaching the clamp to the thing, because you, you don't have a, the hole for the nut catcher, the nut catcher for the I didn't, actual. I took out, I took out any hex, hex holes because I said that wasn't necessary. There, there, there is, I figure I one, one one bolt, bolt only one, one bolt, bolt is needed is for, for to attach, attach it to the, to the axis, axis, and there's a nut catcher on the axis. Actually, Actually, and that's a little complicated because the I was looking at the frame last week with where where to bolt it. Uh, any, uh, any any of these any clamps, clamps to, to the, the uh, axis, axis and, and it seems like they, they, they do what, what ideally go in the um, uh, one of the one bolt of the holes where the nut catchers that clamps it together. together. So, so I mean there's other, other motor, motor bolt holes, holes and, and we don't want to use those because that you can't I don't think any of those holes are accessible for anything else other than the motor. So it's got to be at the at the bottom. Let's see. With the motors up, it's it's the bottom bolt hole in the axis on the short idler, and then at the top, it's got to be one side or the other, uh, which I assume. So how are okay? So are both? You're meaning the both both of the holes are now attaching as in. Um. No, no, just just, just one, one of them, I figure, and I, I kind of have to figure that that, that that distance out because, because it's offset, offset, unlike that other clamp design. Right. I had. The other ones, it's if it just if bolts, it bolts through one hole, hole and you just have a shorter, shorter bolt, bolt through the other. So, yeah, I, so I've got to work out the um. There'll have to be some potentially recess to get the bolt of length right, and it could be shaped different too. The details on that. Work in progress. Ideally, it would not be offset, so that it is easier to measure things or like mount things without having to modify lengths. I think. Yeah. yeah. But it would. It, but if you do have an offset, that would also be another. Then you would have to have change the the length of the axes as well. So yeah, that needs to be taken into account. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, there's pros, pros and cons, and cons for, the for the position and where that might, that go. might go. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Mainly, mainly if it's, if it's at, the at the bottom, bottom. Um, yeah. it, it might make it might the axis longer, longer, longer but again the, the, the feed issue yeah. uh, the I mean the immediate issue. answer right now uh, if we think about it is I mean if you use this as a basically your double split clamp collar then adding a nut catcher for the axis itself would do the trick right uh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the, so the, if there's just one bolt, you can only really do one bolt through the existing axis parts because the distance is it's not gonna the two bolts aren't gonna line up with anything on the on the current axis parts. So 
one one through the the clamp uh, bolts for the for the access parts there, and then a shorter bolt just to clamp the to clamp itself. Um, it's the only way I can see that that design will work. And it and you're are you planning to use the the 30 millimeter existing bolts from the BOM? Yeah, I, I assume that. Um, yeah. But yeah, we'll have to get the, the I have to measure yeah. those distances. I think know about what it is. Thirty millimeters okay. is a little short. I thought on that other. Um, so it can be yeah. recessed or nut catcher if necessary. I wasn't sure how well the nut catchers would print because I tried I tried different variations with the nut catcher on the curved side. I could do that or on the flat side. And I wasn't sure how well that would print uh, in the position. But I see that there's yeah. other. Uh, it's you can like assume that. pretty much like with the fan you know with the coolant print cooling fan yeah the nut catchers and bolt holes like this they print pretty well because the print quality is pretty high when you have even when you have overhangs because we've got the fan uh, for mm -hmm. print cooling now and so, i suppose mm -hmm. the uh don't, maybe it maybe even it would even print, print easier, easier on its on side, its side. Just print the uh yeah. Bolt holes themselves. I, I, don't I don't know which, know which way, way it might print here. It could print um, um, just, just the voids, voids for the, uh, the bolt uh, holes uh, horizontally, horizontally on the bed, maybe, maybe. relative to the bed. That's faster, easier, easier because it's a, it's a spherical hole. hole but the, the yeah, the. Yeah, the, the can add different, different, different net catchers different, different ways, ways is necessary. necessary. I look like I look like, look like a lot of third millimeter bolts, bolts are using now, now that you, you have a nut catcher, catcher for the end, end but the but heads on those, on those are not they're not hex. It's, it's, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. it's an Allen wrench round round, round round head bolt, head right? Those thirty millimeters, the ones I saw, I think, in the current build materials and some of the photos. It looked like it was for like an Allen wrench style bolt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, so there, there, don't have to have a net catcher on, 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 on one side of the, side of the, the clamp. clamp. That, I know that I know one, that issue, one is issue is that, I think, uh, uh, so it was pointed out before, the, the, the nut catchers, catchers on the motor side end up behind the motor. So I was trying to get the nut goes in there and the nut catcher on the axis side and then clamps all that together. That I don't know how well that holds the nuts in there if you can take that apart. You know, you know, if it holds if the, it holds nut, the in nut in there, in, there, in a good position where you can get the three threaded, you know, you know apart, apart again after, after you can reassemble, reassemble and disassemble easily, easily. Uh, uh, without having without problems, without problem, having to, to take, the take the motor off, off and all that. I, that. I don't know how well how that, that uh, would work. work. That would be that nice if it did, but this assembly, assembly on the motor end to clamp it could be a little bit difficult. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. Um, yep. Let's see. HTML. Yeah. I, was, I, was kinda, kinda thick, thick. I hate to have I hate too, to much, have too unique much unique part cap, but, but yeah. for the for these things for things feet, for feet, to raise, to raise this, this thing up thing might up, be might to redesign, be redesign that, that snap, snap clamp. clamp. Uh, uh, where, where it acts, it acts as feet, and just put two of them on each, next each, each, or one next to each, each corner on each section of pipe at the bottom, bottom, and that would prop it up, it up, you know, uh, a half, a half inch, inch or so, or so I, something like that. Like but that, that means you got to have, have, have uh, Well, I mean, you could use the clamp itself, part, right, to be the the legs, right? Yeah, yeah but the... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean technically, technically for the Z-axis, the Z -axis, there's only one, one at the bottom, bottom so that would so mean that adding a whole bunch more, plus, plus they take a they whole, take whole bunch more bolts, bolts. Uh, right. if they're the bolt style, style but, but um, yeah, yeah, you'd yeah. need, for the collar style, style, you'd need uh, two bolts yeah. times eight, that's eight more yeah. bolts. No, so. that, is, that is an issue. For a 3D printed version, if we're printing our corners, we can, yeah, we can throw that height into the corner pieces. As yeah, you said. yeah, change, change those. those. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what that design, design would look like, but, like, but yeah, yeah. yeah. square. Otherwise, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, but otherwise it would be it would be convenient to make the clamp such that you don't need to mod. You just have one kind of clampy. So it's another additional constraint 
that it'd be only as thick as the corner pieces, you know, so that it doesn't lift things off the ground. That's that's harder to do. Yeah. A lot of it is, is testing on this stuff again because it, you know, with the plastics, like those snap clamps. Um, yeah. I mean, technically, I think you could build the printer and it would work without, you know, maybe it would wobble the frame, but uh, you could print the feet and put them on after, I guess, but it, there's different ways you could solve it, but uh, kind of need a, a, a good solution that doesn't require too many parts, so I, well, the snap-on feet seem like one of the easiest way, but that's another separate part from... Uh, the color, the color clip that works better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um. Any questions on that? On the geometry or? Uh. uh, uh no, no, I, no, I think I've figured, I've figured it out. out. There's, there's, there's just, just. It's the. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's all the distances and <laughs> in, in between, between the style, style of the clamp, clamp and then the, 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 the length of the the rods and the axis and, and, axis and all that. It all depends on the other. So. Uh, and, it, and it, of course, we want it to, want scale, it to scale, too, so getting the getting thicknesses, the thicknesses right, right on those, on those you, know, you know, it may work, may work one thing may work for the 10-inch uh, version, version or 12-inch version, version, and then for 16, 20, 4-inch version, version it, I, I don't want to have to be different. I mean, it'll have to be, find some some points that scale for that, too, so we don't have to print different thicknesses of parts. That would be annoying. Yeah. So, getting, getting uh, uh, the bolt holes, the holes to, line to line up at each, each point. point. Yeah. 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 So, a lot of, a lot of the same problems that all depend on the shape of the, of the clamps. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, but yeah. That's, that's okay. Trick. Okay, sounds good. Um, let's see. So, let's take a little bit just a little bit of time right here to look at like when we explore the basic workflow because it was quite productive to for the Aussie club in Ontario we went through FreeCAD version point zero one six and the workflow of doing sketches creating three-dimensional objects out of those by extruding those with pads then drawing any further shapes on any surface to make a more complex geometry and then from those surfaces drawing any further shapes on any new additional surface to pretty much getting complex rather complex geometry so both features or pockets in those sections now in, in FreeCAD 17 or 18 that's a little different but let's actually create a new document here and uh, so I'll share my screen um, yeah um, share my screen Right, so take a look at this FreeCAD, a new window. So if you go to Sketcher, and maybe Abe, you can help me. So I'm going to do a XY plane structure. Uh, I'm going to do a... So this is the basic kind of uh, exercise. So you draw yourself any structure, you know, blah, blah, blah. Close it upon itself. You then... So then close that sketch go into into part design and then do a pad and the pad is pad a selected sketch now it tells you in order to use part design you need an active body object in the document please make one active or create one so use the migrate function part okay so so in part design create body X, is y this plane. Point one seven? Uh, this is actually point one eight. Okay, so okay. I'm gonna say okay. Start a part, create sketch. There. Well, I, see, I think the the idea is that first you gotta create this body, and that's the only addition in the in the workflow. But for for a novice, that becomes impossible to manage. Like, how do you? How do you know that? Um, How do you know to do that? So, so there it is. I did it, but I had to do that extra step at the beginning. Abe? I figured a little more about 0.17, 0.18. Yeah. 
Uh, I've looked at some because there's some features there that make sense. And I think at first I thought certain things like assembly two and stuff wouldn't work with some of the new versions so well. But I think that that's not necessarily the case. Like with a lot of things, it's uh, you know certain bugs with some of the the design. But the purpose of the the body, all that is, is they've put containers. Uh, kind, of the, uh, kind of the the software, software container, container for, for the parts part, because in point one six a problem we frequently have is, is it's not just the not coordinate, coordinate system, system or the relationship, or the relationship to the parts, parts but, it's but it's like, like sketches and things. things. Sometimes, sometimes you have to, you have to they're mapped map to surfaces, surfaces in point one six, and I think in point one seven and newer versions, versions you don't have to always map it. Things are more independent, and you can shift them around, and that makes it easier to edit. So that the interaction, the interaction between parts, parts is more modular, modular. Uh, uh, so you don't so get, you like, get the glitches we get in point one six when you like change something in relation to one part and it just throws off everything. Uh, I think the parts, those body coordinate systems and so on that it's got there, lets it be more independent and modular. Um, and that's really all it's for. I think it's just like. And some of that some is of that visual is stuff for planes. planes. It shows those those, those different X Y plane, plane features, and I think there's ways you mm-hmm. can use that. Yeah. And I think that also increases compatibility, compatibility for some of the things that we want to use, like uh, uh, the future, like like, like tool, tool pathing, pathing for machining machine things, things, and for uh, um, uh, maybe the, the, the finite element, element analysis, analysis, things like that. Uh huh. Because sometimes, sometimes you know some of the tools in the workbenches in the older versions. They're not very compatible all the time together very well. Yeah. So I think making yeah. the, I think that that's the, their goal with that software change is to make it more, uh, uh, it, uh, less dependent almost, even though it's it's more modular, so it's less, it doesn't break as many dependencies between things. Between right. Different work right. Between. But I haven't noticed, other than having to make. The, the, the body, body the plane body elements, elements there, there that are in the visual thing that, that I haven't really worked, worked with those, those in detail to the point yeah. that I, I haven't yeah. had an yeah. issue where I needed where I to understand, understand the, the uh, details of that. You just create it and then everything, and everything seems to work normally. Yeah. Like in yeah. So basically, to summarize, so if you look at my screen, okay, so I just created a pad, put another feature on that, put a hole through that, put a hole through the other. So kind of the standard workflow. But just the point was, at the very beginning, uh, before you, you start a part, so say I create a new document, I want to use the basic OSE workflow. Instead of going straight to sketch like we typically would, um, okay, XY plane, does it allow me to just create a sketch and extrude it? Close. I thought Part design. It, it did some of those things. Yeah, it did. Automatically. It actually did allow me. Uh, uh, I think, and I don't yeah. know what the differences at this point between 0.17 and 0.18 very well. I've looked at both, but I, I think I said that there were some new interesting features in 0.18. Um, yeah. But I don't know that is buggy, too, still. It's obviously beta software, all of it. But right. Yeah. There so, were, were. Essential, yeah. So what I'm observing here is if you go to Sketcher, and you do an X Y plane and do something like that. No, go straight to Part Design. And then when you do the pad, do the no, do the sketch within Part Design. It allows you to select a sketch, a plane such as X Y. Okay, great. And then once I start drawing here, draw my shape here. And then say close that. Then in part design, yes, I am able to create pads right out of that. Excellent. So just a minor variation. So which, but it's actually simpler because we work the basic OSE workflow within the part design workbench, not Sketcher. Um, if you are in in part design, uh, the sketch thing, like okay, say I go on. Uh, well, let's let's cancel that. Say okay, say I want to put a feature on that, put a sketch on that. Yes, it gives me all the tools within a Sketcher workbench. So that's actually very convenient. So I could put a square on this, square feature on that, close, and then pad it. And there you go. you got a little pad coming out of there. Um, 
so yeah it is actually quite convenient not bad not bad um, just as long as we remember that because the thing is right now it's for Linux it's kind of hard to download 0.16 anymore because that's in a more in a more hidden repositories so um, yeah uh -huh. I think my instructions on that it's pre legacy, legacy. I, I, it took me a while to figure that out too, but uh -huh. the commands are fairly simple. I can't remember. I thought that was posted somewhere, or maybe maybe it's on the forum. Maybe that should be put on. Uh, um, as far as I FreeCAD Legacy Point One Six is a fixed version, so it seems like it's real nice to have that version in OSC Linux for a while, and then yeah. we had we have Point One Six and Point One Seven. And ideally, if OC Linux gets updated, oh, yeah. 0 .16, 0 0.16 would be, would be great to have. Uh, it, it, I guess, both. I don't. The daily uh, 0.18 that doesn't seem necessary, right? It would be good to have both versions just so we can yeah. gradually learn. I see. Seven. Yeah. No, that's a good point. So FreeCAD Legacy, it even says 0.16 is used to mitigate the disruption brought by the new point one seven part design workflow so all you need to do is add the repository to your ppa to your what's ppa stand for uh, let's see repo well, whatever the repo is add that to your software sources within ubuntu to make that work um, so that's good that's good now let's see if i could actually uh, try that because that will be useful. See, because when I when I have FreeCAD on my normal computer here, it's 0.17 and 0.18. So if I uh, go to software sources within, uh, so in settings, system settings, right? Where do I add the software sources? That's in system settings, right? Well, if you open a terminal, you can just copy and paste those commands into a oh, yeah. terminal. So, sudo add apt. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, there we go. So, just go to terminal, add your repository, and then upon... So, in terminal, do this. Add the repository. It's going. It added it. And then sudo apt get update. Since 0.16 is, is, is stable, I almost wonder if there's um, a way to, if they have a package. I know I downloaded some other versions of uh, FreeCAD in a, uh, they call it a, Portal container formats. I think it was actually. Um, oh, I was testing uh, the version made for Assembly Three Workbench. I haven't looked at it much, but it, I think it's 0.18, which is why I it, it seemed a little buggy. But I noticed that the Assembly Three Workbench features were interesting, so I and it was easy to download a uh, container format for that. Uh, it's just a single file and it runs in its own container that way. And I don't think you can run it. The one thing that I don't know that Freakin was not being able to run versions independently. I don't think that it runs at the same time as uh, another version of FreeCAD, but it's completely contained. So I don't know if that would be an advantage for uh, OSI Linux. Uh, it might be smaller or something but and i have more versions of freecad that way i have four versions so after i added the the software source what i do do i just go to software updates it, it did it let's see well it's still downloading the package so i mean you just have to wait for it to it's probably running through some other sources for other packages too because update um, it tries to get all the updates for your for your Linux right uh, right it is um, right but how do I now okay now in my computer that where I have 0.17 and 0.18 running how do I install 0.16 
it it is going to download it and it will be it'll put in a different icon like um let's see on my machine if i type in freecad in the search bar i have freecad legacy freecad and freecad daily and okay, I so I other... when I look at search for FreeCAD, I only see FreeCAD and FreeCAD Daily. Yeah, so, so what... once it finishes installing, uh, it's oh, probably it's not, going it's, the whole it's installing thing. right now. Yeah, it's looking through all the PPAs, the package, uh, whatever, all the different packages for the system. And because it... That um, the system settings contain a whole list of the uh, right. sources. It's going to go through all the sources, uh, and, and FreeCAD is pretty large, so that will take a while to download. It's like a so it's it went through all the sources now, and it says says finished. Um. Oh, okay, so let's see you. Uh, yeah, I'm not seeing what the video is on your screen. I guess the most updated thing, but uh, let's see. Pull up. Yeah, once. It, it should install it. Uh, yeah, it's, it what, looks like it's got some errors here. It, it adds the, the PPA, the repository uh, link to that. And once you do that, get update, it, it will go through all the updates. Eventually, it will, it will download that one. And it will just be installed as there should be a separate icon you can use as Freecad Legacy. And the icons are noticeably different than I usually just use. It looks like I got some errors here, though. That's pretty normal. It's probably other PPAs that are out of date or no longer functional. I have a bunch of that too that I need to clean. Uh, uh, and when that happens, that means FreeCAD wasn't installed? Uh, it might not have installed other apps or packages that it was trying to update. So it, it depends. I mean, it'll give you an error for each specific uh, package. I mean, it might need to be, if it was a serious error, it might not have gotten very far, but usually it's just certain ones, but it's other apps, but um, depends on the error. So sometimes you do have to run uh, a different package command to clean or um, yeah, remove package uh, dependency issues. So is the reason you need to install this is because you're on a different computer? You well, so computer? on my computer, uh, it was set up such that it was when I up, you know, I was at 0.16 and then I hit update. I went to 0.17, oh. so uh, I shouldn't have done that okay. at one point. Yeah, I'm. I've, I've had to update had certain apps. apps uh, uh, I think I originally installed. Um, one of the early OC Linux versions, and I found that there were functions, Caden Live and other stuff that were a couple versions back, and the newer versions had significantly better features, so I ended up just updating. Um, okay, so sudo apt get update, that updates the sources, right? Yeah, so sudo, 
sudo app. Well, the app repository with the, the PPA command, the first one, that just adds that line with the link to that PPA, the FreeCAD legacy. It just adds, that's just a link to the repository. Basically, it just says add it to the list. And then when you do sudo applicant update, it goes through the entire list of PPAs. And sudo app get update actually installs things, right? Yeah. 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 Right. So yeah, I've got some. So I mean, it's telling me things like hmm. some certain errors, and yeah, got stuff from Ubuntu version 15, which I'm sure you've probably upgraded from that or something a long time ago, right? So right. Maybe maybe the the uh, I think there's an app command to clean. I think it's like apt clean. Let's see. Clean. Let's see. There's an auto remove command. Let's see. So you can do like apt auto remove and that uses removes unused packages. Uh, I think there's a clean command though. Sudo so you can do sudo apt get auto remove. So should I just try get try to remove FreeCAD and then run my legacy command again? Um, I don't think you need to remove anything in particular. It, it's the the auto remove or auto clean. Somewhere there's a clean command. Let's try that. Let's see. Um, um, that cleans things up. Terminal and usually the help uh, in the terminal is really good, but. Seventy to remove. Okay. If you've got old packages, the auto remove command should clean that up. Sometimes it's better just do it steps at a time. I've had issues with the package system on older versions of Linux that were just about impossible to solve that I can figure, but these days it's, it's, it's been easier. I just stick with the, the automatic stuff or sometimes an air. With auto remove? When do when do um, libraries get disused? Like when you update and why why do I have all these extra unused libraries? Yeah, probably because you had let's see, you're on you're on Ubuntu sixteen oh four currently. Yeah, is that, is that right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's two and mine won't get upgraded eighteen all time. But I think if you were on fifteen before, it's possible that some of that stuff hasn't gotten cleaned because you haven't got in there and it's not auto you've got to tell it to auto remove. Yeah. Clean. Maybe it's a different um, I mean some of that stuff it should do automatically, but inevitably something doesn't get cleaned out automatically, so I just tell it to do the simple commands first, and then as, as it removes more of the error messages, hopefully you can narrow down the problem. Right. If there's so after the auto-remove function, running the sudo app get update would be, that should update my, that should install FreeCAD Legacy, yeah? Can you share your screen to show when you look at FreeCAD so you have 
Legacy, uh, Daily, yeah, yeah. and 17. And I also noticed, so so Pascal during the workshop had a Mac for using Cura. Now Cura on Mac looks completely different than on than the Lulzbot. This is Lulzbot Cura on Mac looks completely different than a Lulzbot Cura on Linux, which is interesting because so, I thought they all looked the same. That's another yeah. comment I have. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So let's see what you got there. Can you see my screen? Okay, I, I don't know how well that's. I I have. Oh there. Oh yeah, so you got three of them. Yeah, yeah. I I, I had multiple. You can drag those icons to the bar uh, on the sidebar, and I had all three of them there. Plus, I have a fourth one. I think it's this FreeCAD app image. It's um, for Assembly Three. That people that are maintaining or developing assembly 3 uh have it packaged as a separate package uh -huh. that way and it's, it's, it's i thought i wanted to try you know assembly 3 a little bit but i found that it was that they're working with the uh the daily version 0.18 and that's a little buggier i i guess you'd have to build a, a version with 0.17 or something to, yeah. Well, unless they're just flat targeting point one eight is the release for Assembly Three. I, I'm not sure how compatible it is with point one seven and all of that. So, but the the features for Assembly Three looked really uh, useful. And that's like that's a totally Assembly different Assembly. architecture than uh, um, basically a different formula, right? It is. It's FreeCAD. Uh, they're, you, they, they're packaging FreeCAD, the daily 0.18 or some version of it, uh, with the Assembly 3 workbench, and it's being designed as a, Assembly 3 is going to be a separate workbench module. And I think the point is that you develop it until it's uh, merged into FreeCAD at some point. Full yeah. Um, and it's. It sounds like they're getting a lot of features, a lot better than the Assembly 2. And Assembly 2 is great when it works, but I've found uh, not finding that many cases when it works that well. Because it, it actually, when it works, it allows for smaller files because the files are just linked to one another. It's It almost allows for like more automatic file simplification in some ways. There's features in the assembly workbench that uh, lets you compound, you know, parts and stuff together to make assemblies and or sub assemblies, and then you can link those sub assemblies into larger assemblies gradually, larger files, and they're all supposed to be editable uh, just by opening you know, the one that, that's how assembly is supposed to work, but yeah, uh, it doesn't work quite that good yet. Yeah, so I'm running the auto remove function right now. It's still going through a bunch of stuff. I guess it's, it's, if I never d did that, because I never did, um, I think it's got five years of cleanup. Oh yeah, an older machine. Uh, yeah, I noticed it looked like you were looking for a laptop. I was gonna say, um, it, 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 laptop. It might, it might be a good idea to put out a uh, like a one ad on social media. See if any. Anybody's looking to get rid of, um, you know, a slightly used uh, machine or something, you know. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, so I've got the Dell Precision M6500, and that's actually still a high-performance laptop. It's a little heavy in weight, but uh, when you look at that, we actually got another one of those because it's still pretty top-performance hardware, and it's only like 500 bucks. No, three. 300 you could get one of those for like 300 and it's still very competitive hardware it's just older but its specs are still really good like yeah, 8 gig yeah. ram and um yeah, yeah. i7 whatever the whatever the processor is it's pretty pretty good stuff quad core um kind of yeah, stuff so yeah. actually that, that, that works still still quite well a drop in performance after the updates for um 
just a little bit. In some cases, I don't know how serious it is, but the uh, those spectra and meltdown problems have to do, I think, with memory mainly. But they, in some cases, the efficiency gains were like 30% on certain generations of CPUs, and a bunch of that got just eliminated by those bugs to some degree. I don't know how much, but it seems like it, it's been a little bit slower. And only the newest CPUs fix those problems. That over the last generation two, they fixed a few things, but they're not, they're only partially fixed or fixed partly in software and not fully in the hardware. I don't like buying like the new hardware because that's almost never worth it. And you know, it's try to keep a desktop for several years, but it's usually, it seems uh, beneficial to just get something that's uh, a generation behind or something that's not that so that fast because you do get a lot of power efficiency especially for laptop from the uh the newer chips battery life is way better mm -hmm. yeah okay sounds good um all right so i'll see if that cleans up and ends up installing 0.16 and then we just have to, for 0 0.17, 0 0.18, we need to just create, just work within the part design workbench and hit the new new sketch from there. And that pretty much addresses the, um, the create body thing, which I don't, I don't really understand what that, I don't really know what that means, but. Yeah, um, it, it, it's, um, it's really a container. Um, they're putting because I think they're extending the coordinate system because there are like in the old pre-CAD you read those instructions it says that there's different coordinate systems there's local coordinate systems oh yeah for different parts and then there's global coordinate system and then you're translating different things between that but I I think it's excuse me, also containers so that the, the parts for different modules and workbenches and so on can interact uh better because uh -huh. there has been you know, a lot of this if there's incompatibility between different functions and work i think mean, they're trying yeah. to put put the parts in different containers in the software even and then kind of to translate between different functions and work benches, i think it's an extra layer yeah. of uh, features it, and it it looks good i mean it should yeah, enable yeah. no that's good that's good and I, yeah, I see a lot of other features interesting in point one eight, but I, I looked at them before and read about some of that, but I don't. There's like additive primitive art features, and I'm not sure I understand those. Completely. Yeah, how about going back to simple workflows like like the exploded part animations? Is that working well for you in point one six versus point one seven? Because I know my point one six, I mean, kept crashing on me. Have you had success with exploded part animations? I haven't used it in a while, but I, I see so exploded part animations. It, 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 I remember using it. I, I got to where I could use it pretty well. Yeah. It, if you're right, you have to learn the bugs, but yeah, you kind of have to learn how to use it right. But it's been a while. But um, yeah, I right. one of the things I was trying to use more was Assembly Two. I was thinking of trying to do animated parts like uh, pistons and so on. Right. I wishing, technically, it's supposed to. That's not really what the uh, assembly to animation function is for. It tells you to use something else, but um, it it is possible to do different animations, probably with some Python and stuff too, to uh, create parts like cylinders and things that can move, so you can animate the tractor and so on. Um, Eventually that it shouldn't be that hard to do, but eh, every time I try, I usually run into some some bugs on some of that. But yeah. hopefully that in, that continues to improve. Yeah, yeah. And I have to look at at point one seven more. I, I don't think I think that the import I haven't tested a lot. There's an import function to import point one six files to uh, point one seven and so on. And I, I think it just generates those those bodies, and I, I don't know what kind of uh, glitches and stuff it may have. That, that's because I haven't used it frequently. I uh, tested it some, but 
and I didn't see any problems with it when I was just checking it out and importing parts just to see what it did. But I assumed eventually there could be some bugs with importing uh, certain complex parts or something, but uh, it, I'm just going to have to learn how to import the simple parts and then maybe reassemble stuff in with the point one seven eventually. But, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, so, you know, just now I I played with some FreeCAD. I did some explosions, but yeah, after, I mean, can you identify when you're going to get into a crash? Because, you know, every time it just tends to, on my computer, I'm, I'm suspecting it's something with my computer, but it just, you know, all of a sudden, bam, just crashes after a few enough explosions. Yeah. Any suggestions on that? Let's see. It's been a while since I've used it. I know since a lot of those bitches usually saving periodically actually seem to, to help just because, not because it could recover where you left off, but because something about saving or doing certain other functions in the program uh, clears out certain stuff that may be causing it to, to crash. Um, oh, yeah. It, just hitting the save button almost prevents it seems like it prevents crashing uh because it it might whatever bugs they are there there's some kind of loops or something it might be getting stuck on yeah. i don't know something in the code that's, okay that um, it needs to clear out something in it, and it okay it's it safe so yeah control it no because you know, we want to get all the OSC clubs like reliably working on that. We we want to make sure we get that because it's a very powerful just for doing instructionals. If you have the full CAD, you can very well do uh, you know large teams just making all kinds of the, like the very nice build instructionals that we did for the 3D printer last year. Those are really high quality. So we want to do more of that and have more people do that. So it'd be important to. Get everybody going yeah. on that. The, the, I think the free cat tutorials is that we have the basic stuff is pretty good. I mean, we update it a little bit for um, the newer version of Sleep here. But I, I have a, a running list of certain tutorials and things that I know aren't included, and I keep meaning to eventually get those in the tutorial. I have a, a file actually, I think, I've done on my log sometime back, and I've updated it occasionally with things I figured out for. Um, simply two word pinch and, and different examples. I know there there are functions in FreeCAD that are not like part buttons. They're literally listed under only under the menu. Like um, let's see, under Sketcher. Uh, I don't know if you can add buttons for some of these things or not, but there there are some things that by default are only listed on like the menu for the part uh, or for the workbench. Uh, like Sketcher has things to well, there's a button for map sketches. There's things like where you can work with sketches different ways, like reorienting sketches, which when you run into glitches a bunch when you're changing something, you can like unmap the sketch from the face and then remap it back to another face or, or try to fix the glitch that's been uh, caused. Also, you can just reorient it if you just want to try something different. Um, and that, that helps a lot sometimes, and that, there's no button for that. Uh, also, the part workbench, there's, um, see, there's create simple. Well, there's a lot of times people are doing the, you can make a compound of parts, and then you can simplify the, the compound, and you end up with a simple copy. It's an easy way to get a simple copy is to create simple. And it's only available. Um, on the on the menu, it's not a button. So I have like a list of like several things that you get to put into tutorials and, and just some notes on uh, things that did or didn't work and uh -huh. sketches and sort of where you run into bugs. Cause yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, but let's wrap up here. So, uh, Jen, Jen, do you have any other comments or questions from today? Um, uh, nope. nope. To free okay. CAD, we're up to like what version 16 or 17 now? 17? 18 is the latest, but w the official OSE Linux is on point 16. Okay. And uh, 
So we just went through how, how to install 16 if somebody is wants the legacy version, which is right now the official one, because it seems to be quite stable, pretty good. So, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Cool. Yes. Yeah. So I just did a little exploded assembly. I did hit save after everything. So that seems to be marginally gooder, you know, pretty cool. So yeah, I just did that on, as a sample here. Okay, but now it's getting into Christmas time. So I actually, um, I would suggest like maybe we take a little break for December, like kind of like last year we broke off in December because it's going to get to the holidays and um, people getting pretty busy. So maybe um, I'd say we we um, hold off on the meetings for for a few weeks, but let's um, let's still communicate and continue. I mean, some of the priorities right now, yeah, definitely on the on a D3D Mini, make that happen. Um, you know, continue working on that that design. That's one one definite aspect of of work. Uh, Ruslan's got a lot of work on a different different workbenches he's working on and and the d3d version for germany using the aluminum extrusions i'm going to continue working on uh like right now still still other modifications on a on a 3d printer where the latest is what i'm showing on my screen here is the titan aero extruder where we just added a print cooling fan using a pretty simple mounting system um which is actually yeah, so, so I'm continuing to work on that so that we can build the different variations like the small version and the large versions of the printers as well as the, the filament maker and, and grinder to add that to the list and then working on marketing and other things. But but yeah, so um, then let's, let's continue meeting again. So I'll, I'll call it again for uh, after December because I know that December gets kind of slow for everybody with the holidays, but, um, yeah, and I was, I was last, week, last week, but I'd say too, if you get snowed in, then I get more CAD done too. So <laughs> yeah. Um, so to communicate, uh, um, once in a while. Email, yeah. So uh, definitely post things on the OSC workshops, Facebook page for that's, that's a cool way to get updates, but yeah, email me if you have any, any new stuff so we can, uh, probably I'll be building the D3D Mini here. I've, I mean, I've got when I have the frames, the four by eight foot sheet, steel sheet that comes with the 16, 14, 12 inch, and 10 inch frames. So I want to build out the 12 inch version. So if we can get those, well, the, for the PVC version and the metal frame version, there's two types. The the metal frame version is a version that is separate from what we're doing right now with the PVC mounts which are 3d printed but all those are are to be done um yeah d done in prototype that's what i'll be working on here building that out so we have i mean literally we're going to go to that construction set approach where we have all these different variations we can build in different axis configurations and things like that so that's definitely going forward and as ruslan gets going on uh, he's he's continuing on the 3d printer workbench you've got the frame in there what I can do at this point is write out the full specification for what what it would look like to have a functional workbench for the 3D printer construction because we want to get that you know we've talked about it for a long time we, we started that a year ago about but we want to do that workbench where you can drag and drop parts and modify make different iterations of the 3D printer so that many different people can make many different versions but with the part libraries being right in FreeCAD so you don't have to worry about which is the you know downloading from the wiki so that'll be a, a great step forward as well. Um, yeah, yeah. So other than that, uh, we'll we'll continue then. You know, keep keep on communicating, and then we'll pick it back up in a, in a new year. So so thank you everybody, and we'll we'll be in touch, and we'll keep working on you know updates on the workshops page and things like that in email. Okay. Um, so thanks a lot and we'll see you we'll see you soon.